graphs of functions a cheat sheet okay so we will be looking at just a summary of the different types of functions that we can have all right so let's start with the most basic one the straight line okay the straight line and the straight line is the first one we learn at school and we have the basic equation y equals mx plus c so we need to know what each of these things stand for so the m is our gradient our gradient and how do we calculate that we say that's the change in y divided by the change in x right and we can also say that's exactly the same as saying how do we find the change we just take the difference right so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and that is our gradient then c that is our y-intercept y-intercept and why is that our y-intercept well because to find a y-intercept we get that when x equals 0. That's when we find a y-intercept. And then to find an x-intercept, that's the same for all graphs. We say let y equal 0. So the x-intercept, uh, this is something that's not usually part of the cheat sheet. But I'm just going to say the x-intercept, that is when y equals 0. So let's just see what it, what, it, what it looks like in this case. So if we make y 0, then we get 0 equals mx plus c so to solve for x we take the c over negative c equals mx so negative c over m will be x so this is our y-intercept negative c over m all right so that's a straight line now let's draw a quick graph for that and just to see what all of these things mean in practice we have our y-axis and our x-axis and if we have a graph looking something like that then this would be our x-intercept which we saw is negative c over m negative c over m and our y-intercept there which was the c the c value so that's our y-intercept and our gradient that is the change in y divided by the change in x so this is our change in y and this is our change in x so change in x so that's our gradient how much it goes up divided by how much it goes sideways all right that was the straight line uh, let's look at the parabola uh, parabola all right so that's usually the second one we learn so what is the basic form of the parabola the basic form of the parabola is uh, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and the important thing about the a is it tells us whether it's a smiley face or a sad face so if our a value is positive greater than zero then we have a smiley face a positive smiley face on the other hand if a is less than zero then we've got a sad face parabola a negative parabola right so that's the important thing about the a then the important thing about the c in this case it's again our y-intercept y-intercept and for the exact same reason as before with the straight line that's because that's what we get when when we make x zero uh, when we say x equals zero Right, so we see if we make x zero, we get a times zero squared plus b times zero plus c. So that just gives us y equals c. And again, uh, well, let's first do the b before we get to the x-intercept. So the b value that has to do with the turning point, right? So our turning point gives us the x value of the turning point is negative b over two a. And how do we find the y value? Well, we just substitute it into the equation. So that would be f of negative b over 2a so there we have our turning point right and then what is what do we find the x-intercepts so x-intercepts x-intercepts 
that is when y equals 0. And if we make y 0, we can prove this by completing the square, but I'll just write it down. We all know this formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And there we have our x-intercepts. But, before we draw the graph, there's another standard way that we could write the equation of a parabola. Right? And that is by saying we complete the square. So, completing, completing the square, completing the square, then we get this form. y equals a, x plus b, squared plus q. Alright, and in this case the a tells us exactly the same as there. I'm just going to write that down again quickly. So if a is positive, we have a smiley face. If a is negative, we've got a sad face. And now, what does the p and the q tell us? Well, in this case it tells us exactly what the turning point is. So the turning point is just exactly negative p and q. So we see it's the opposite sign of there. So if that was x plus 3, the turning point would be negative 3 and q. If it was x minus 3, this would be positive 3 and q. Alright, and we don't read off the y-intercept and x-intercept directly off here, but again, uh, I'm just going to write for the y-intercept, we just say x equals 0, and for the x-intercept, we just say y equals 0, and solve for x. All right. Now let's quickly draw the graph of what it might of what one of them might look like y axis and x axis all right so let's say this is our graph oh i'm going to redraw that i just want a little bit more space between yeah okay that's an ugly one so that is our graph here we have our turning point. So the turning point is either negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a or we could also say it's negative p and q if we have this form. Right here we have our y-intercept that is c. Our x-intercepts, that comes from this equation. So I'm just going to do a little bracket there and say that's either that or that one with the plus and with the minus. All right, so this one we get with a minus and this one we get with the plus. All right, what else is there to show? That's pretty much it, right? And we see A is positive in this case. A is greater than zero. That's why we have a smiley face. Hence, all right, smiley face. This is a parabola. Let's get to the next one, which is the hyperbola. The hyperbola. Okay, hyperbola. Hyper oh wow, that's disgusting. Uh, I'm gonna rewrite this. I had a wrong grip on the pen here. Let's try it again. Hi per oh man, why am I writing so bad? Hyperbola. Alright. So hyperbola is the standard equation of y equals a over x plus p plus q. And again, the a, what's the most important thing about the a? Again is to do with the shape. So if a is positive, then we know the graph is in these two quadrants, right? The first and the third quadrant. But if A is negative, then the graph is in the second and the fourth quadrants. The P, or the negative P, the opposite sign, that tells us the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. Alright, so that's where the graph does not exist. So that's when the bottom part will be zero. Then Q, 
that tells us, you guessed it, the horizontal asymptote. Horizontal. Horizontal asymptote. Asymptote. All right. And this, that's what that looks like. Let's again draw the graph. So again, y-axis and x-axis. And uh, let's put in some asymptotes. Let's say there's one. And let's say there's another one. Okay. So here we have our graph. And in this other quadrant. All right. Okay, so here we have an x-intercept, and here we have a y-intercept. We didn't write down what those were, right? That is again the same. So our x-intercept, that is again when y equals 0. Right, and our y-intercept, that is again when x equals 0. So all you need to do is make y 0 to find your x-intercept, and make x 0 to find your y-intercept. And that's what you'll have. Uh, this point here, so let's say, let's first do this. So that's our horizontal asymptotes value. We see that's Q. Right, so here we go, Q. And this is our, well this, in essence, is our vertical asymptote. We saw that's negative P. So that's negative P. So then this point here, we can write that as X and Y. So negative P and Q. And that is what we have to know for the hyperbola. Perfect. Let's look at the next one, which will be... Uh, let's do the exponential. Exponential next. Okay, so the exponential... Exponential function. So the exponential function, uh, the full form is Y equals a times b to the power x plus p plus q. But we generally only use y equals b to the power x plus q. We'll have a brief look at what the a and the p can do, but most important is the b, or the a and the p, but the b and the q is the most important. So again, if b is greater than 1, then we know we've got a increasing function. So it goes up. We always leave graphs from left to right. So from left to right it goes up. But if b is between 0 and 1 and now b cannot be negative, that's important. That's where the a will come in if there's a negative. But b cannot be negative. If it's between 0 and 1 though, then we have a decreasing function. A right, decreasing function. Goes down. Uh, q what does Q tell us? That tells us the horizontal asymptote. Same as what it did in the hyperbola. Horizontal asymptote. Asymptote. Okay. And then I'm going to draw in, in another color. I'm just going to show what the A and the P can do. So the A, that would be, if we want to draw the graph, well, it could. It could either, one, it could stretch, stretch up or down, or what it could do is it could reflect, reflect in x-axis. Whoa. Reflect in the x-axis. Alright, so if it's, so that is if A is negative. And this one just stretches it up or down because you multiply each y value by a. All right. What p can do? So negative p. Negative p. That will be our shift uh, right and left. Shift right or left. All right. So, but like I said, we don't we don't often get these questions in the papers. Most often, it's just the b and the q that plays a role. Uh, let's draw the graph to see what it looks like. 
Okay, axes, y axis, x axis, and let's draw some asymptotes. Okay, so there's an asymptote, and there we have our graph. Okay, so again, again for the x intercept, that is when y equals zero. And for the y-intercept, that is when x equals 0. And so you can just find that out. And so this part here, this is important. This is our Q, right? our horizontal asymptote. And the B, we can see because it's an increasing function, we at least know that B is greater than 1 because it's increasing. Fantastic. There we have our exponential. Just two more to go. Well, actually, just one more. Just the logarithms. Just the logarithm to do. So the logarithmic. Logarithmic graph. Okay, so the logarithmic graph, we have y equals log of some function of x base of something, something like b. Let's call it x plus a. Let's say we've got that. All right, but then if we don't do that, let me just write the a a little bit more properly because we'll probably use that later. So x plus a, that's not much better. All right, now the most important thing about logs is that it's exactly the inverse of the exponential, right? Uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna draw the graph maybe a little bit earlier, okay? And then we'll, we'll we'll see as we go along. So that's the y-axis, and that's the x-axis. So what we know is that we cannot have log of a negative number. So this part here, log of this thing, this thing must be greater than zero. So x plus a must be greater than zero. So x must be greater than negative a. All right. So this will tell us where the asymptote is, because x cannot be equal to negative a, otherwise we have log of zero. That's impossible. Right? So we'll say that negative a, that is our vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. Asymptote. All right. That's negative a. And then b... Again, similar to the exponential, we saw with exponentials, if b was greater than 1 or if b was between 0 and 1, that told us some important things. And it will be the same with logs. So if b is greater than 0, if b is positive, then we have an increasing function, right? So the function will be increasing. From left to right, goes up. If, on the other hand, b is, uh, if b is between 0 and 1, between 0 and 1, then what do we have? Well, a decreasing function. Exactly. All right. Let's draw the graph to see what happens. Let's draw, let's say, one that's like this. And going that way. So this is our logarithmic graph. So the asymptote, uh, asymptote is, we said, negative a. So this is negative a. That's the asymptote. And then again, for our intercepts, intercepts is again, y-intercept is when x is 0, when x is 0. And the x-intercept is when y equals 0. There we go. And again, you can find that by just making x0 to find y-intercept and making y0 to find the x-intercept. And that is it for the cheat sheet of functions, of graphs of functions. Let me know if you have any other questions about, about how graphs of functions work. There's not, we didn't go into much detail. This is just a summary of what the basics of the graphs look like.